Hello and welcome to another episode of Minicab Adventures. Today we're going to take a look back in time to when I bought uh, my Gardan Minicab and what it looked like and what maybe I would have looked a bit more closely into before I got into the project. So uh, I hope you enjoy what you see. If you've got any questions please feel free to ask in the comments and if you like the content just subscribe and let me know um, if there's other kind of similar content that you'd enjoy. The Gardan, the Gardan GY201 minicab was designed in the 1940s by Yves Gardan. And one of the reasons why I chose this as a project was um, it's a very simple, easy to fly aircraft. It flies two people uh, with a range of about 400 nautical miles. Um, it also is capable of taking off from short grass strips and is easy to maintain. It's powered by, uh, well, originally a Continental A65 engine, although there have been modifications and people fly them on a C90 or a, a range of other airlines. But the, ones, the one that I've got um, is powered by an A65. So today I want to talk a little bit about what the project was like when I got it. Uh, I, I started after attending uh, the LAA rally back in 2018. I started looking on A4s for a project and came across uh, Whiskey Mike. Uh, some photos that you can see here of what she was like when I first found her. So she has not flown since 1993 according to the logbooks and the person who owned her at the time had made the decision to take, recover her because the covering was the original that had been put on in 1954 uh, uh, in 1955 when she first built by Monsieur Errant in France um, and it was time after 50 years, 40, 40 something years to um, change the original um, Egyptian cotton covering uh, which had been put on with dope um, and, and recover it. But unfortunately, the project, like so many others, got started and then abandoned. So when I uh, um, came across her, she'd already been, um, the fuselage had been separated from the wings, the tailplane had been taken off, all the covering had been removed, uh, ready to do kind of uh, the basic recover and just check all the bits and pieces that you only can ever get access to every now and again. Um, the engine had been fully removed and all the cowling um, and really as my kids would say she just looked like a pile of sticks. But uh, on early inspection the main wooden uh, structures were all sound despite having been sat in the barn for nearly 30 years. Um, the space frame of the rear fuselage and the main body of the uh, cockpit area fully intact, all the glue joints strong, uh, no damage, no water damage to the wings. So that was really good. Uh, what The damage that was apparent was um, the turtle deck had been destroyed. It's not really a structural component to it, but it's needed for aerodynamics. So that was a, um, one of the things that I knew I would need to have to fix. Also, as I looked around um, the aircraft, the rudder um, was missing. Uh, all that was remaining of it was the rear, rear spar uh, and the story went that a cow had eaten the rudder uh, leaving the <laughs> just the main spar retaining. So um, I knew that would be another thing that I'd have to tackle and I'll talk a little bit more about that in another episode. Um, the engine, well actually I was quite lucky the, the, the plane came with two engines um, and although neither of them are in perfect state and um, there needs to be some significant inspection for corrosion and things like that. At least there's two lots and hopefully out of two we'll be able to make one good engine. The wings were also in reasonable condition. They'd been stored up in the um, eaves of a hangar for the past 30 years so no mechanical damage to so to speak other than some on the um, plywood skins. Uh, and, and one of the projects, that, one of the tasks that's still remaining to do before we get her back in the air is to take off the remainder of the ply skins, fully inspect all the joints. But on, on inspection of the main spar, 
um, and all the ribs, the joints and the wood uh, all seems to be pretty intact with minimal corrosion to any of the mechanical um, controls for elevator and flaps that run inside the wings. Um, looking inside the cockpit, uh, all the instruments were still intact and in good working order. Uh, the next one of the next stages to do in, in the restoration is to remove them all, clean them, test them individually. Um, she's got a fairly good selection of instruments, not just the basic. So looking across the middle, you can see the normal three um, that we'd expect to see to fly, so airspeed, uh, RPM, and altimeter. Um, but then she's got a few additional instruments. Um, all going back to the time, the late 40s, early 50s in France. So this is a variometer, or a, um, basically what it measures is how quickly you're going up and down. But it's a traditional one, so it doesn't stop. It can go round. So one, one, when you're flying, one thing to note is if it's showing four uh, on the bottom half of it, then you could be going up uh, at 600 feet per minute, or you could actually be going down at 400 feet per minute. So it's um, definitely not uh, an instrument to just glance at, you need to really know what you're reading in relation to the other instruments. Um, the compass is a uh, lovely little built-in oil um, compass, built in Paris, um, and it appears to be working perfectly. Um, there's a turn and slip ball which is driven by a gyroscope that is driven in turn uh, by a, a ventry tube on the outside of the aircraft which is um, how a lot of the early and still current um, gyroscopes were operated. The altimeter appears to be fully functioning so you can set Q&H on it on the day and it shows you the altitude of where the aircraft is so that's very positive. Um, there's also some engine gauges that we'd expect to see so oil temperature and oil pressure uh, and and the basic uh, controls that we'd expect to see on an engine, including throttle, carb heat, um, there's all the trim controls and everything else. And I'll, I'll, as I get to renovating um, the cabin area, I'll show some more footage of all the different instruments and what they do and the controls and how they fit behind, so you can really see and understand what what goes on into the cockpit of the aircraft. Um, on this mini cab, the cabin opens through a hinge at the front um, and there's a canopy jettison so if you get in trouble you can pull this lever and it removes two pins in the spring and the front um, hinge comes undone and the, ca the canopy can just fly off or be pushed off and allow you to evacuate safely. There's also other safety features in the cockpit such as a fire extinguisher and um, one of the interesting things that I saw was some of the plaques that are on the airplane. So there's plaques in French uh, showing its early history before it was imported to the UK in the 70s. Um, there's interesting little uh, memoir plaques for that previous pilots have put in to remember the different radio frequencies in the area that they were flying in. And what's fascinating is now some of these places being closed um, gives you an idea of the vintage. Uh, of the airplane. So I hope you've enjoyed this whistle stop tour around uh, what the plane was like when I've got. In the next episode I plan to show you some of the renovation that I've already done and as I go along give you regular updates on the different bits and pieces that I'm doing. As ever if you've liked this video please like, hit the like button, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when I do another episode. Thanks and see you next time.